Hi guys, Jesus welcome God. back to another episode of What Gown Do I Have Today? So, I've got another client gown in. Let's crack open the pack. I have no idea what to expect. Another large parcel. What to expect, what to expect. I'm so out of it recently. I've been on holidays and once I go on holidays, it's like my whole life resets, you know. I have forgotten what I was doing before I went on holiday. I forgot about my healthy eating. I forgot about everything. So now I'm getting back on track. But this is a bit of a surprise. I know which one this is. I've been waiting for this one. Oh my God, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. I haven't even turned it inside out, guys. Darling! Okay, I don't know what it is about polka dot chul, but every time I use it, I just fall madly in love with it all over again. Let's put this on a hanger so you can have a look. Okay, guys, I'm so excited because I have been waiting for this dress for what seems to be forever but it's in actual fact it's just normal time normal production time basically this is a sheer a-line polka dot gown with polka dot chul and um, a sheer bodice nude cups and lace can't wait for you guys to see the lace because it is stunning absolutely stunning I absolutely love the lace that this client has chosen. Polka dot chul is also beautiful, like so beautiful. Now the only thing you really have to be worried about with a gown like this is that because it is so delicate and because it's so sheer, um, it means that it can stretch really easily. So making sure that you hang it up by the ribbons that are included inside the dress and not by the actual straps of the dress is going to be key because the straps can possibly stretch as well. These straps you can see are just made of um, the polka dot chul, but I think I might want to replace these with spaghetti straps, maybe made of satin. So I'll have a talk to the client about that. Um, the lace is really beautiful the placement over the boob is really beautiful they put one here which I think I'm gonna get rid of because I think that looks funny so I might get rid of that lace the trim is lovely they've used some really nice nude cups this time um, instead of these weird ones I normally use but these are beautiful foam cups and that's something else that you should note as well that when a gown comes in Sometimes the cup isn't right for the client, but we won't know that until the client puts it on. So once a client puts on a gown, I can usually instantly tell if um, that cup needs to be changed or removed. Sometimes we need to put a padded cup in there. Other times we not, might need to just change the shape of the cup. Sometimes um, a round cup doesn't work. Sometimes it has to be oval. Sometimes it has to be long, um, depending on the dress and the client's shape. So that's something that can always be tweaked um, at your fitting. Right, um, they've also put boning in the sides, which is great but they didn't put any in the front. So I'm gonna have to add a little bit of boning in the front and that's just gonna keep that dress firm and straight like that, instead of it, you know, flopping around. So that's what we want. So I'm gonna add a piece of boning in there. Normally there's boning in the center also, um, but in this design, because it was sheer, I opted to not put the boning right in the center just because you'll see it and I thought it would look a little ugly. So, and that's something that I can always add later as well. If the client comes, tries on the dress and we really do need that structure, then I can always add a panel. Um, now, even though I'm putting clear boning in this, this gown, um, you have to understand that to put clear boning in, it has to go into a channel. So when you're sewing a channel, it doubles the fabric over. So you actually see white panels or ivory colored panels, even though the boning is clear because you don't just glue the boning on, you have to 
put it in a casing and you're actually seeing the casing not the boning in most cases they've done a really good job of making it sort of disappear you can kind of see it on the side here that you can see is like a panel and particularly up against skin you'll probably see it a lot more so this bodice is quite sheer it's basically um, a chul underlayer and the polka dot overlayer with the lace overlay and the nude cups uh, we've got the chul skirt which consists of three underlayers so four layers in total then underneath that we've got and the lining which is in a sheen, uh, simple lining, and we've got pockets, everyone. So these pockets just finish off this gown. I mean, it just gives it this relaxed, effortless, you know, oh, this dress, I just found it on the rack. It didn't take six months to make. Um, so we've got the pockets in there too, so she can put you know, a little lip gloss or something like that in there if she wanted to. Let's turn around to the back, and the back is an open back. Now, um, low gowns like this with an open back, I've actually made it an inch above the waistline, and I do this for very good reason. Basically, if you've read my blog on low back wedding dresses, you will know how problematic they can be. And depending on the way people stand, their posture, the curve in their backs, and also how busty they are, will depend on how low you can make this back. Now, most people, if it's above, if it's say, bra strap line, which is about here, most people can get away with bra strap line because it's universal. It will be able to hold the bust firmly without uh, slipping down, all that type of stuff. So and without showing any gaping. Now, the lower you go, the more issues you're gonna have with gaping, okay? Um, and that's just because you've got a bit of fabric going over a curved body. And whenever we move, the dress is gonna move as well. Um, and the dress is a solid piece. It's not, um, so when we move, the dress stays still so that gaping appears, okay? Um, now, some people have said to me, I don't care if it gapes, I want a really low back, I don't care. And when it comes in and they put it on, they go, oh, I don't like how it gapes, because they don't understand um, how it works. Now, you see these beautiful Instagram photos, and you see photos of low back wedding dresses and they look fantastic. But the thing that you have to understand is that most of the time, they're photoshopped, and second of the time, they're standing still. Um, now, you can always get a perfect shot of a low back wedding dress if you're standing still, but as soon as you move, that's when that gape happens. So you've got to be really careful. So me as a fashion designer, designing these gowns, I have to make a bride fully aware of the consequences of a low back wedding dress. Now this back should not gape. One, because um, the person isn't extremely busty, but also because it's above the waist. And if you have it above the waist, you can really tweak the fit and make it a firm fit and make it beautiful. If it's lower than the waist, you know, waists go in and then you've got your bum, okay, this back area here. And because it goes in and then out, that's where you're having the problem. That's why it's gaping. If we just had straight backs and bums, I mean, that'd be hideous. But if that was us, then there would be no issues with the gaping because it would be just like a tree trunk. Okay, but because we've got curves, that's what's creating the gapes. This has got two covered buttons at the back. Um, it's got a low V, and then we've got the zipper closure as well. Now obviously, something I need to tell you about the construction of this gown is that because it is sheer, and this happens with all our sheer gowns and all sheer gowns in general. When you've got a sheer gown, you're going to get less support and less structure. And that's because you don't want to see it. So we don't want to fill it with boning the way we normally do. Normally we have, you know, 10 to 15 pieces of boning inside a bodice. But we can't do it with this because you just lose the, um, the beautiful design of the lightweight, effortless, delicate, 
feel of this gown. Now we can add structure and it'll look a little bit more, um, more like a corset. Um, but this client didn't want that. She wanted it to be really simple, delicate, elegant. So that's why we kept the boning to a bare minimum and we just put it in the sides. But I am going to try and put some in these front panels as well. So this structure would be a little bit different to the other gowns that you'll see. We've got the nude cups um, that go just directly from the inside and that's because we don't put them in between layers because we like to keep that nude cup as close to the body as possible so that the colour matches as close as possible. Um, if we put it in between a layer then you're going to have the colouring not be right because you've got one layer between you and the cup and then you've got two layers between you and your body. So we try and keep the layers the same. So two layers between the cup and the outside and two layers between you and the outside so that from the outside you've got the same amount of layers looking in so that hopefully the colours will be the same or the colours will be right. This is something I have to tweak a lot. Um, when brides come and try on gowns and the colour is not right, I have to, and if they're a particular colour that I can't get a bra cup in, then I usually source um, some fabric and we cover the bra cup in a matching fabric to the client's skin tone. So you won't get that two-tone mismatch look, okay? It will always try and be uniform. All right, so this structure is really basic. There's only two pieces of boning in here, clear boning, and then there's the nude cup, and then we've just got the dress. There is no strap in this gown and the biggest reason is because the back is low and when we have a low back or a sheer back, which in this case we've got both, then we can't have a strap because if we had a strap you would see it going across here and it would look terrible. So as long as the client is aware that um, there'll be no strap here which is less support again. Uh, and if they're okay with that, if they don't need the support, this client does not need the support in the front. So she's fine with not having a strap. Okay, so this structure is a little bit different to my normal. The skirt is absolutely beautiful. There's uh, small bits of gathering all through the waist, but not too much. And then you've got this gorgeous, looks like it's about an 80 centimeter to a meter train. Just beautiful. Oh, it's so soft and fairy tale like. She is going to die. I can just cannot, cannot wait. Well, guys, that one is a super special dress. I hope you enjoyed it. It is absolutely stunning. I cannot wait to see it on the bride. Um, and I think she will absolutely love it. Please give me a like if you like this dress, if you like this video, if you want to see more like this. And I hope to catch you next time in my next gown reveal. I upload each and every week. Um, I do videos on wedding gowns, construction of wedding gowns, design of wedding gowns, anything wedding gown related, as well as fashion videos and vlogs. All right. I hope to see you next time, guys. Thanks for tuning in.